Father, we give you thanks that you continue to share life with us by your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are right now enlivening us. And so it is good to pray, come Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. I, I don't know what brings particular joy to your households, right? It might be a particular meal or a, a unique adventure that you have a habit of enjoying. But one of the things that brings particular joy uh, to my household and, frankly, to me when I was very little was Legos. Do you guys like, who likes Legos? Who likes Legos? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. High five. Legos are awesome, right? Legos are amazing because you go and you buy this box that's wildly overpriced, and then uh, you take it home, and you know the thing that you're about to create because it's right there on the box, and, and you see it, right? And you, you open the box. You do it carefully so you don't damage the, the front image, right? And you pull out, and they've got the bags now. They're all numbered, like which one you're supposed to. Back in my day, they didn't have the bags. You kind of dump out this pile of, like, little plastic bricks. And, and then you've got an instruction booklet, right? And with that instruction booklet, you start, you turn it over, and the first thing they have you build is the little guys, Right? And then you start with a platform and you're piece by piece and you're building. And by the end, as you flip through and you've opened up all the bags, um, you've built the thing. And you've no, you know that you've done it right because it matches that box image. Right? This is, this is what Lego has given you. They've said, here, here is a, a prefabricated, perfect image of a thing that you can now try to do. And and it's fun because all of us can succeed at this. All of us can do it. And that's like Lego phase one. That's Lego phase one, which really for me kind of matched maybe like some of my initial thinking around what it meant to follow Jesus. See, I thought at some point in my life that and to follow Jesus meant like following a rule book, slowly constructing piece by piece so that my life looked like some prefabricated image that was right. And if I just did that and then didn't break it, I was good. But that's actually not the Christian life, is it? Frankly, I think that's why so many people in my generation and, uh, that are walking through different struggles in their faith that we kind of collectively call deconstruction is because they're like, wait, maybe it's not just about piece by piece and then holding on and not breaking the thing. See, if that's, if that's the Christian life phase one or if that's, if that's Lego phase one, the actual joy of Lego, right? It's after you build that image on the box. The actual joy of Lego is taking that thing apart and taking all those pieces and like into a tub. So now you have like this vat of like little plastic bricks and people and you can mix and match them and then from this tub, this like vast array of possibilities, you construct something that is amazing and that has never been constructed before and often mine ended up looking like planes but like that's how it was. See, the amazing part of Lego is not building the predetermined, prefabricated thing that someone else said was right or cool or beautiful. Like the genius of Lego and the joy of Lego is like stepping into it and recognizing that we can join in creation. That's what Lego is. Lego is an invitation to join a creative process. That's actually how you know it's working. How you know Lego is good is when you take the thing apart and start building something beautiful on your own or with a friend or in your family. 
This is the Christian life that we are invited into. It's this idea of saying, look, we have been made uniquely to participate in what God is continuing to do in the world. You are invited, honestly and openly, to join the ongoing ministry of Jesus Christ in the world that his Father created. That's Legos. You are welcomed into that. It's what our psalm is saying, right? That Zion in perfect beauty is shining forth. You're invited. You're called to be part of that shining. And it doesn't happen when we try to craft ourselves into a prefabricated idea or when we try to align ourselves with others' opinions or expectations. I think this is something that I've been guilty of. I think individually we can struggle with this, and societally we can struggle with this. We love and we pursue different ideas of what is right or what is good or what is beautiful. In the Lego world, beautiful is building that little thing on the box until we move into like co-creative ways. In our own lives, we construct systems and structures and institutions to feed us ideas about what might be right or good or beautiful. And all of those things, they can be crafted in such a way that we feel like we have to then become the image they've given us. This is, this is actually really connected to the idea of independence, actually. Independence is, at least for us in our American context, it was initially an independence from Great Britain, from the UK, from, uh, from, from King George. Right? And, and so, so our founding fathers took independence and said they wanted freedom from a thing. And they were going to try to create an institution or a nation that would then determine what does that look like if it's done right. And I'm going to say, friends, that that is a lesser thing. See, an independence from something is lesser than a freedom into something. An independence from something gives us something to resist and it gives us an image that is perhaps just opinion-based. This is the idea of beauty, right? How many of you really love um, like the beach and the ocean? You're like beach people. Okay, when I go to the beach, all I see is sand. Uh, it's just not beautiful to me. It's like just not the thing, uh, right? I'm, I'm much more of a mountain person. M mountain people, can I get a shout out? Thank you. All right, right? Like we went to Glacier last weekend and it's astounding in part because there's no sand there. It was great. <laughs> right, but if you're a beach person, you'd be like, wait a minute, the ocean is awesome. Like you don't get a sunrise or a sunset like at an ocean, right? You would, beauty... See, beauty is this crazy thing in the sense that we generally define it as this observable thing, this outward-facing thing, a, a veneer of sorts, and it's always defined by opinions. I think mountains are more beautiful than oceans. Others would disagree. And, like, that doesn't hold a lot of water after time. Thank you. Thank you. I worked on that one. But the idea of beauty, like a true beauty, one that is not founded in an independence from a thing, but a beauty that is founded in a freedom into something. Now that's not opinion-based. That is not a veneer. And that's not crafted by someone else for us to live into. That's something that we are called and invited and empowered into because we have the Holy Spirit who is the giver of life. 
This is what we've been talking about for weeks, that the Holy Spirit gives life, literally animates you and I, enlivens us, right? And enlivens us in such a way that we would have the freedom in Christ that he has given us. And that freedom is a freedom into him and to live by his spirit. This is how Galatians starts. Galatians 5, chapter 1 starts with saying, there's freedom in Christ. That's why you were made free. And then in our scripture reading, it says, we're free so we can live by the spirit. And that life is beautiful. Can I say this real quick? You're beautiful. You are beautiful. Right? And you're beautiful not because of some outward thing, not because of some system or structure or the job that you have or even how good you are at your job. Like, your beauty is founded in the fact that you were made in the image of God and that right now His Holy Spirit is enlivening you in such a way that you may shine forth with the same perfect beauty that we read about in the Psalms. You are beautiful. We can get twisted around that, right, though? Like so much of our thinking, so much of our decisions and our feelings, it's really wrapped around our ideas of beauty, like identity and worth and belonging and things of this nature. Like, do I somehow conform to someone else's opinion? Versus, am I stepping into the freedom in Christ to be beautiful in the way that he's made me? And if you roll that snowball downhill long enough, you're going to arrive at the question, well, how would I know? Because one of the benefits of the Lego box is that, like, when you build it, you know you're done. And you know you did it right. One of the benefits of um, our, our vast marketing industry is that if you look like that thing, then you feel like you're done. But you know there's that big downside, right? That kind of gives away the lie. One of the things I love about Jesus and I love about his kingdom is that he doesn't leave us alone with that question. One of the things I love about Jesus in his kingdom is that he's always articulating, like, the outcome of a thing. He gives us something to know if we're actually stepping into a life by the Holy Spirit. In, in the gospel, Jesus is there, he's on a hill, and there's crowds, and they bring him uh, the crippled and the sick and the lame and the mute. And he heals them. And can I tell you that that might not be the biggest miracle in that story? Because, see, the biggest miracle might be that he saw beauty in those who were crippled and lame and mute and sick. And in healing them, gave others the opportunity to see it as well. Like, the outcome of that is that a crowd of people were amazed and joined in praising God like the main thing that we see happening there, the way that Zion is shining forth in perfect beauty is that people were invited into amazement and to praise. We see this in Galatians. I love how God gives us like ways to understand if we're living in the spirit. See, if Jesus did that then, then the healing that we're receiving is to understand that our beauty is not defined outwardly or by someone else's opinion, or by the box. But that our beauty that we're invited into and empowered to receive is this thing that we call the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These nine things. This is not just a virtue list. This is... This is actually the life of the Spirit being lived in you and me. This is how we know. If we wonder what beauty looks like, if we wonder about our identity, if we wonder, am I actually living because there's a Holy Spirit who is the giver of life, go to Galatians 5. 
right? So capture that in, the, in your mind for just a minute, the Galatians 5, those nine things. I mean, not nine. Just capture that in your mind. And if you would, just join me for a minute. I want you to rewind this morning before you walked in. If you're really bold, go pre-coffee. Okay? And I just want you to picture and maybe remember in what ways were you receiving this fruit of the Spirit this morning? Like, were you receiving love? Like, were you hearing the voice of God say your name and say, you are loved and beautiful? This morning, were you, were you like receiving patience or were you trying to manufacture it so that you could get to church? Where were you? Like, find that image with these nine. What you were receiving? And then what were you expressing? See, this is how we know that we are receiving life in the Holy Spirit, is that these attributes are increasing in their reception and their expression. So I don't know what image came to your mind. Uh, when I do this, I picture, which is weird, I picture a soundboard with all the dials that go up and down. Like, which one am I? Like, man, I was really receiving from the Lord this morning. And we can say that. That's okay. That's not bragging. But over here, man, I was resisting. I didn't want to hear anything about this patience business. And I bet if you made a habit of that kind of examine, that kind of self-assessment, that question of how do I know if I'm living in the spirit right now? And you took these nine and you did that maybe once a week. I bet you would have a really clear sign of the health of your life in the Holy Spirit. Do you think? Do you think that could work? Right? Not in some kind of self-judgmental way, but in a way that would say, actually, I am practicing and placing myself in a posture to receive life in the Holy Spirit, and I know it's happening because these things are increasing. Not only in the way that I receive them, but also in the way that I'm blessing others by expressing them. Right? Because it's not just about receiving. That's like a spiritual logjam. It's also about the releasing, the expressing of what God is doing in your life that others might be encouraged, that they might witness the character in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. See, this is life in the Holy Spirit, and this is how we know that we are living into that life. It's why we say that the Holy Spirit is the Lord, the giver of life. And it's in this place that we can, like with confidence and assurance, so that we are stepping into true freedom and into true beauty in ways that we desperately need for our own healing and that the world desperately needs for its healing. So I invite you into that practice to take a minute, do that little bit of like fun self-assessment, like take the pulse of your own life with the Holy Spirit in this way. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks that you continue to be a God who loves us, that you have shared your Holy Spirit with us in ways that we can experience, in ways that others might be able to see, things that are not based on opinion or some prefabricated box top, but that are rooted deeply in the ongoing ministry, Jesus, that you have and in the way in which we are receiving life from your Holy Spirit. And for these things, we give you thanks. Amen.